so glad that you could join us today again join me again today because last time we were talking about the second great era of these last days and I established based on the word of God that God has a mark a seal that seal Revelation 7 says will be placed in the foreheads Revelation 14 said that that seal the people who are sealed have the father's name written in their foreheads and 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 I and I showed you that it is the Holy Ghost that according to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30 that it is the Holy Ghost that seals us Holy Spirit that that, that seals us and and of course the father's name has to do with the father's characteristics and the Holy Ghost seals us by placing what God said in in Jeremiah uh, uh, that he would make a new covenant and in that new covenant he was going to place his laws on our hearts in our hearts and of course hearts they represent our minds and you know there are several other scriptures that we could have used to confirm that what God uses to seal us is his law and of course we concluded with Ezekiel chapter 20 that literally states that the commandment that is a sign an outward sign that we are being sealed inwardly is the one that calls us to be obedient to the command to the Sabbath the commandment that has to do with the Sabbath where God said I have given my Sabbaths as a sign, an outward sign, that these people are worshipping me because I am the Creator, the one who is the true God, the ruler of this universe. You, you see, friends of mine, this controversy between God and Satan has always been about who God really is. Who is God? And of course, in the command to keep the Sabbath, God gave it to us because He said, I'm your creator. I I'm the one, He said, that redeemed you. I'm the one that made you. I love you. And so I want you to serve me because you acknowledge that I'm your maker. I'm your husband. M make me your ruler. And, and He doesn't want to be your ruler because He wants to dominate us. No. He, he wants to be our ruler because he knows that as creator, as the one who made us, he is the only one that could really sustain us. He's the only one that really knows how to take care of us. And so he says, remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy because I am your creator. And he said, this Sabbath will be a sign between us. It, it would be a, a, a memorial in time where once a week, every week, we could connect with each other. We could spend time together. This is our special moment. And every time you do that, then the universe acknowledges that I'm creator as well because of this sign that exists between you and me. Now, now I, I, I ended by say, establishing that in these last days of this earth's history, Satan recognizing that more and more people are recognizing God as the creator has worked a number on us because Satan he doesn't care how he gets us to hell you know as long as he gets us there and his master weapon in these last days is deception that's why Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 Matthew chapter 24 and I just want to you know I, I just want to highlight these words of Jesus in Matthew 24 on three occasions at least, Jesus says the following. Matthew 24 verse 4, he says, Take heed that no man deceive you. Talking about the last days. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. So in the last days, deception would exist about who Jesus is, about people who are following him and what it means to follow Jesus. This is also repeated in verse 23. That says, then if any man say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Verse 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive 
the very elect. So this deception thing would be rampant in the last days. People pretending to be following Jesus, to be doing what Jesus says. They will even use signs and wonders, the Bible says. So they will work miracles. But you see, Jesus had already established the sign. And what is the sign? The seal of God through the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? Writes the law on our inward part. Writes the law in our mind. So we don't need people to teach us, but the Holy Ghost will teach us. But how, how does the Holy Ghost teach us? Does the Holy Ghost teach us things that are contrary to the revealed Word of God? Of course not. And so in these last days, the Bible predicted that the, 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 the devil will also have a sign. And we read that the last time in Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, where we are warned in the third angel's message, Revelation 49, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead. So just as God's servants are sealed in their foreheads, the beast, of course, which is, and his image, which represent a system set up by Satan himself, will make people receive a mark or a sign. But their sign would be received not only in the forehead, but you could receive it also in your hand. God warns against receiving the sign. Verse 11 said of Revelation 14, The smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast. Again, worship, worship. And that's why I told you, friends of mine, that the Bible establishes that God's sign is a sign of worship. It's a sign that you are worshipping God because He's the Creator. Others, however, will worship the beast and his image. And by so doing, they are worshipping Satan. But they, don't, they really don't know that because He's deceiving. He's working behind the scenes. Whosoever receiveth the mark of His name. So, so God's people have the Father's name. The beast people have the mark of his name as i said already the mark that shows that you are worshiping the creator is the sabbath in fact in the sabbath command that is stated worship me because i am the lord your god the creator of heaven and earth so his name is there creator god those who worship the beast have, the, have his mark and have his name and then verse 12 of revelation 14 says here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God. You see, so the commandments are right there at the heart of the, of, the, of the people who follow God, who have the Father's name. His name is there because they are keeping His commandments and they have the faith of Jesus because they're not keeping the commandment on their own will because we can't keep it by ourselves. We will fail and that's where the old covenant failed. Because people felt they could keep the law on their own. But no, we have to keep it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Through His power, we keep His commandments. So, and of course, we receive the Holy Ghost when we exercise faith in Jesus. Because no Jesus, no Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost comes when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. He comes in as the personal representative of Jesus, bringing with him the character of Jesus, the, the fruit of the Spirit, which of course Jesus said, the, the, the summary of the commandment is to love, and the fruit of the Spirit is love. So when you have the love of Christ in your heart, being demonstrated through the Holy Ghost, you love people, and more than loving people, you love God Almighty, and you spend time with your lover every Sabbath. And so the deception of the devil has been to counterfeit the Sabbath. So these days, people are saying the Sabbath is important. In his encyclical, to all the world, especially and primarily to the leaders of countries of the world, in order to get the world to accept the climate change agenda, Pope Francis, continuing the work that was done by popes before him in re-establishing the importance of the counterfeit Sabbath wrote in that encyclical that one of the solutions to the problem of climate change is that we should honor Sunday as the Lord's Sabbath day. No, no, that is not in the Bible. Just as, just as this, this belief that when people die, they're not really dead, but they go to heaven or to hell or to purgatory came from the bowels of Babylon 
which was transferred uh, through the pagan Roman Empire that became the papal or Christian Roman Empire, transferred into the Christian church by, by, by those by, by those bishops, led by the Bishop of Rome, who has now become what we know as the Pope. That, that, just as that era about, about uh, the state of the dead came into the Christianity as a result of that Babylonian lineage, in a similar manner today, the counterfeit sign has come into the Christian church. So, so, so today we are being told that the Sabbath has been changed to Sunday. Where in the Bible do you record that? Nowhere. The Bible did predict, did predict that one day an effort was going to be made to change God's Sabbath. How do I know that? Well, Daniel, Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7 predicted that. I'm finding it. Daniel chapter 7, the verse is verse 25. Now, of course, in Daniel chapter 7, there are four beasts mentioned there. The first beast was like a lion, which represented, we know, the kingdom of Babylon. The second beast was like a bear, which we know represented the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. The third beast was like a leopard, which we know represented the kingdom of Greece. And then the fourth beast was an ugly thing, which, of course, Revelation calls a dragon, because the same description with seven heads and ten horns, right, and ten heads and, 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 and ten horns, is called a dragon in Revelation chapter 12. It is the same beast as represented in, in Daniel chapter 7. So we know they are one and the same. So in Daniel chapter 7, we are told concerning this fourth beast, this fourth beast, we are told that in verse 25, Daniel 7, 25, this fourth beast, right? Among this fourth beast, there will be 10 horns, okay? In verse 23 and onwards, we are told that. And among these ten horns, there was going to be another horn that was going to come up among these ten horns, which, which Protestants have identified with the growth of the papacy, the papal power. Because those of you who don't know, there was a time when the Bishop of Rome, the Pope, was not only the ruler of that little space that he is the ruler of, the Vatican City, he was the ruler of what was known as the Papal States, which was most of Italy. So he had a, he had a literal kingdom. And not only did he wield power and control over the papal states, but he also wielded power and influence over the other European states. So the army of France at one time was his army. You know, he would send them to, to wage war because he was recognized as the authoritative leader of an unifier of the entire, you know, Holy Roman Empire. So, so he... Of course, that kingdom represented by the papacy is the one that Daniel is talking about in Daniel chapter 7. Hear what Daniel 7.25 said what he would have done. He shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the sins of the Most High. And we know this is a historical fact, right? That, 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 that the Christians, anybody who disagreed with the papacy was persecuted, murdered, right? But look at what he also says. That this beast power, the papacy, was going to think to change times and laws. In fact, there are some, some uh, scholars who say that this times and laws should really read, he shall think to change the law that had to do with time. Which of God's laws has to do with time? Of course, the Sabbath command that says, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. So, so how... Has the, this beast, the papacy, been able to change the law that had to do with time to counterfeit the true Sabbath of God? Well, those of you who are familiar with history know, should know, that Sunday worship came into the Christian church because the Catholic church said that we should worship on a Sunday. It was never recorded by any of the apostles anywhere in the Bible. Neither was it established by Jesus? Neither can you find it in the Old Testament. This sun worship or Sunday worship thing was a sun worship thing. It is the pagans who used to worship the sun on the sun's day. It started from Babylon because they believed that, 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 that Nimrod was, was, uh, was taken up into heaven 
and of course his son Tammuz, and of course his wife Semiramis. So whenever you see a woman with a baby, that is really Semiramis. And Nimrod, and of course, not Nimrod, of, and, and Tammuz, right? The baby was Tammuz, the mother was Semiramis. And Nimrod, you know, when he died, he went up to the sun, so he continues to live on to the sun. And that's why sun worship was started as, as, as a protest or a counterfeit to worshiping the one who created the sun, the true God. So Satan had the pagans for years and years and years worshiping the sun. The day on which they worshiped the sun was the first day of the week. In contrast to God's people who worshiped him on the seventh day of the week. So it's, as if they, it's as, so it's as if when God's people worship on the seventh day, the next day Satan would have his people worship him. Because when they worship the sun, who are you really worshiping? Satan. And threw that in God's face. So he set up this counterfeit. And eventually, when Constantine took over the Roman Empire, in an effort to unite his empire, because his empire was pagan for the most part, but the Christian church was growing so rapidly, it was creating problems for him. In fact, the more Christians they killed, is the more the Christians multiplied. And Constantine, after taking over the reins of the empire, decided this persecution thing not working. In fact, in fact, he claimed to have been able to become emperor because he was given a sign, and that sign, he said, was the sign of the cross. And he had all his soldiers march under the banner, that sign of the cross. And so he symbolically accepted Christianity, got baptized, they say. Of course, there's dispute about that, but you know he became a Christian and so he Christianized the entire empire and one of the things he said was folks listen Christ rose on the first day of the week okay therefore let's treat that day as a special day now that would not have offended the pagans who already were worshiping on the sun's day it affected the Christians however because they used to worship on the seventh day the Sabbath but now the leaders of the Christian church saw an opportunity to become influential in the community, in the, the affairs of the state. And so they also sided with Constantine. They saw no harm in it. They did not ban people, however, from continuing to keep the seventh day Sabbath. So the Christians would worship both on Sabbath and they will also worship on Sunday because Sunday was the day on which the Lord resurrected. And there was no problem with that because, I mean, the more days we spend worshiping Christ is a good thing. But eventually, eventually, the situation became uh, um, so difficult because, became difficult because the Jews w became a hated sect within the Roman Empire. And because the Jews were keeping the seventh day Sabbath, the Christian leaders, in an effort to distance themselves from Judaism, said to the Christians, hey, forget the seventh day Sabbath, let's worship God on the first day of the week so that, so that a clear distinction can be made between Christianity and Judaism. Until eventually, one generation passed and then another generation came and another generation passed and soon, the Sabbath was all but forgotten. With the exception of a little group of people you know, little pockets of people, the Waldensians and the Almigenses and some of the others, little groups of people here and there that still kept the Sabbath burning. Now, 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 now eventually, the, 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 because of that distinction that wanted the, the Christian leaders wanted to be kept, they actually made it a law that we should keep Sunday, Christians should worship on a Sunday instead of on a Saturday. Because everybody knew that Saturday was the seventh day of the week. In fact, today we know Saturday is the seventh day of the week. And by doing that, the Christian leaders led by the Bishop of Rome, the Pope, because that's where the headquarters of the church, Christian church was eventually established, changed the day of worship from what was commanded in the Ten Commandments, Saturday, the seventh day, the Sabbath day, to the first day of the week, Sunday. And today, the entire world, or the majority of the Christian world, treats Sunday as a special day. Now, for the pagans, 
they treat Sunday as their day of worship anyhow because they're pagans. And they worship the, the, the most powerful God, the sun. But for Christians, today, to continue to worship on a Sunday is really not putting themselves in a position for receiving the seal of God. Because as I established already, the seal of God is in the Sabbath. Is in the Ten Commandments. And in the Ten Commandments, there's the Sabbath. The seventh day of the week, which is Saturday. Which God calls his sign or his mark that we belong to him. Sunday worship was set up not by God, but by the dragon, by Satan himself, initially through paganism. And then he deceived the Christian world into doing it. Yes, they had political reasons, but, but any reason outside of a thus set the Lord is no reason at all. And so those people who continue to worship God on the Sunday, whether you're pagan or you're Christian or whatever you are, you are not obeying God. And if you're not obeying God, then who are you obeying? You are obeying the dictates of man. And if you're obeying man, God says, you know, the apostles said when they were challenged about their obedience, they said, we rather obey God rather than man. And so when the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, that there will come a time when a command will be given to worship the beast and to receive the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast is contradicted or, or contrasted with the mark of God. And I'm saying to you that that mark or sign that you are worshipping according to the dictates of the beast and not according to the dictates of God is when you worship on a day set up by the beast. And by the way, the beast we already established represents what became of the pagan Roman Empire, which became the nations of Europe. And the thing that holds Europe together is the church. And Europe worships according to the Christian church, according to Roman Catholic Christianity. In fact, we live in a world today where, where you know, there used to be Protestant nations in Europe and Catholic nations. Now, this year, in fact, they, they are coming back as under the same banner. They are uniting again. So the, prote the protest, they say, is over. So now the entire Christian world is following the Bishop of Rome. Is following the papacy. Is following the Pope. And so, friends of mine, it is a deception to feel that you can worship on a Sunday and God will accept that. No friends. You know, you know, I plead with you. You know, I don't just want you to take this as my opinion. I want you to sit down and study this thing. Think about it. Research it. Pray about it. Ask God to, to, to let you know if this thing is, is for real. I believe it is based on what I've discovered from the word of God. I believe it is. And you cannot be deceived, friends. Because you see, when Jesus, you know, Jesus said that there are going to be people who he, who he will say when he comes, in vain, in vain do you worship me. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. We are either following the commandments of God or the commandments of man. Which are you going to choose? Which are you going to choose? You see, this is not an issue you can just sit on the, on the fence with, you know. For, for, for now, some of you may get away with it. But, but the way things are going, I believe very, very soon, there will be a law passed throughout the international order because... It, 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 they're pushing for it. You see, the climate change agenda, the climate change issue is a, is a serious issue. And, and, and as much as Donald Trump is pretending that he's not supportive of it, friends of mine, Donald Trump is in the White House because the churches in America put him there, the evangelical churches. And it is their agenda that he has to implement. And part of their agenda is to make sure that in the United States of America and around the world, Sunday is treated as a special day of worship. You accept that, and you will accept the mark of the beast. You, you accept the Sabbath of God, and you'll accept the mark of God, the seal of God. It's that simple. So, so the mark of the beast is not some mysterious number. No, everybody will be given an intelligent choice. And those who are not making the choice intelligently and intelligibly will make a choice because they want to eat food and they want to continue the good life that they have built. That's why you receive it in your hand or in your head. Some people receive it in their head. That's those who receive it intellectually. They know it's wrong. They could do better. And they say, I don't care. I'm doing this. My church says. 
My pastor says, my priest says I'm doing it. That's in your head. There are some people who are threatened with the loss of jobs. And so they do it because they want to eat, they want to work. That's what the hand represents. Notice you can only receive the mark of God in your head. And so I plead with you, friend of mine, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. And if you do not worship God how he says, unfortunately you will inherit eternal death, eternal damnation. If this message has resonated in your heart, and you'll want some more information, give us a call. There's a book that I want to recommend, the, the book called The Great Controversy, that will give you so much more details than I was able to give you in this half an hour presentation. You know, get that book. You can get it at any Adventist bookstore. And if you can't get it, call us, WhatsApp us, message us. We will get one to you because we want you to know the truth so that you can be set free so that when Jesus comes, you'll be found with the seal of God and not the mark of the beast. Until next time, may God bless you and keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And may God keep you hopeful that soon and very soon we will see Jesus. And when we get to heaven, the Bible says from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before God. If you're going to worship him on Sabbath in heaven, why not start now? <laughs> We'd be happy to have you in any Seventh-day Adventist church. Come join us as we worship our Creator on His holy day. God bless you. Until next time. Amen.